Meet the father of modern gynecology, Dr. J. Marion Sims. He's been dubbed the savior of women and the architect of the vagina for developing revolutionary gynecological procedures and tools like the dreaded speculum. Statues of the 19th century surgeon currently stand in three American cities, including this one right here in New York City. But it turns out your routine pap smear has a dark history. Dr. Sims conducted much of his research on slaves, like Anarka, a teenager who was one of many voiceless, faceless black women who suffered through his experiments without anesthesia or informed consent. For four years, Sims operated on young slaves repeatedly to find a cure for a condition caused by complicated childbirth that left many women incontinent or unable to control their urination. Anarka endured 30 practice procedures before Sims finally got it right. According to historian and medical ethicist Harriet Washington, Sims knew the operation was extremely painful, but wrote that using anesthesia was not worth the trouble or risk. In fact, the pain was so excruciating that the woman had to be restrained by two male surgeons just to make it through. And that's why many people are now calling for his statues to come down. But Dr. Sims isn't the only physician to use black people as unwitting test subjects. It's only one chapter in a long history of racist medical abuse. In the infamous Tuskegee experiment, federal researchers observed 399 black men with syphilis from 1932 to 1972. A cure was discovered 13 years in, but doctors withheld treatment for decades just so they could continue their work. And that's not even the most egregious example. For decades leading up to the 1970s, white doctors in training performed secret surgical sterilizations, including unnecessary uterus removals on black and Puerto Rican women. In the early 90s, the New York State Psychiatric Institute conducted a study into the genetic roots of violence. The researchers recruited mostly low-income black boys and injected them with a drug known to be poisonous. The boys' mothers were given a whopping $125 for having their sons participate. And to this day, we still don't know the long-term effects this experiment has had on those kids. These stories are horrifying, but racism in the medical field isn't a thing of the past. A 2016 study found that a quarter of medical residents who were surveyed thought black skin is actually thicker than white skin. And many of those same residents also thought black patients felt less pain than their white counterparts and recommended less accurate pain treatment. So it's not surprising that studies have found that black patients tend to trust doctors less. And all of this has real consequences on people's health. In East Harlem, where Dr. Sin's statue stands, 80% of the residents are black or Hispanic. And the average life expectancy here is almost 10 years lower than that of majority white neighborhoods in Manhattan. So maybe it's time we stop celebrating this racist history and start recognizing the centuries of abuse people of color have endured in the name of science.